about a month ago, I started building this um, really cool TTL timer. And today I actually wanted to look at uh, this card, which is supposed to be the compare and count card for this timer. The only issue with this is that it doesn't work. So um, while I work the bugs out of this and probably make a new version, um, there's a couple issues with this already, so I have to make a new board. Um, we're going to look at another part of this timer, which is the power supply board. And this is not on an actual card. This is going to sit besides the um, main board where the cards plug in. Um, one reason for that is I need a little more space with this. And the other one is um, all the components on this are relatively tall. And I also wanted to um, keep the option open to actually put this on a heat sink. This is why there is a large cleared area on here. Um, but getting ahead of myself, we should look at the circuitry first. So for this sort of retro TTL <clears throat> um, project, I wanted to do something a little more interesting than to just slap a 7805 on it. Um, and be done with it. So I got out my drawer of old voltage regulator ICs and this one in front here is the LM305 and as you can see I have quite a lot of them probably more than I could ever use in my life so um, this one we're going to use. So if we look at the data sheet for this And if the camera would focus, there we go. We can see this is the LM305 voltage regulator. These are positive voltage regulators, come in a metal can package. They're relatively complex, actually, if you look at the internal circuitry, um, compared to what we looked at before in the early integrated circuit series. Um, this has quite a lot of... Um, transistors in it and some, some funky stuff too like this and then there's also this bit here and down there there's uh, just a fed which I think they're using as a current source if I'm correct here which would make sense so how do you actually use this we um, go on here, minimum voltage input is relatively high actually. It's 8.5 for the um, LM305, it's over here. And the output voltage range is from 4.5 to 30 volts. So with 5 volts, um, we'd be fine. We just have to input 9 volts. Yeah. Um, Shockingly, this is um, not the lowest dropout voltage regulator that um, there is. But yeah, we're not doing super efficient modern design. So let's look at some typical applications here. This is actually a cool circuit that I want to um, probably build in the future. It's a 10 amp regulator with fault faultback current limiting, which means faultback limiting means if you short it, um, it will not continue delivering 10 amps but as you exceed the 10 amp uh, regulator current it will fold back and provide less current until um, you actually um, unshort this output terminal here and then you can draw 10 amps again so this is actually kind of cool uh, probably will design something around this in the future but what we're going to look at today is this middle one here, which is the 1 amp regulator with protective diodes. And as you can see, there's some um, fairly basic stuff. Input voltage, um, regulation capacitor, also on the output, um, filter cap, filter cap here, 
not regulation capacity, filter cap. Um, and then we have the IC here in the, in the middle, a voltage divider on its output that will set the output voltage. Obviously, this is set for 28 volts. We have to recalculate this for 5 because we want um, to base our circuit around 5 volts. And then something that is not as common in modern linear regulators because they usually have all the pass transistors integrated. We have a um, pass transistor boost output here and what we can do is use this <clears throat> sort of complementary Darlington stage here, two transistors, one PNP, 2N2905, I used the 2N2904, but never mind, and A2N3055. So this is our main pass transistor then. You could use this without a pass transistor, and there is um, there's examples of this around here somewhere. There's also examples for switching regulators with this chip, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, we're using pass transistor. And then the last thing that we have to explain are these diodes here. And as you can see, this one is just the input protection diode. If you reverse the voltage on here, if you hook up positive here to ground and negative here, you'd short your power supply through this diode and therefore protect the regulator, albeit you'd probably blow the fuse in your power supply if you have one. Same goes for this diode and the output. If you feed back voltage into this the wrong way around, this one would um, short out. And then we have this one. This one is a little more interesting. This protects um, from shorting the input to ground. So if you have voltage in this capacitor, for example, and if you turn off your device, this discharges faster than this, you'd actually have more voltage on this side than on this, and you'd sort of drive voltage back through the regulator here. Um, this diode uh, prevents this by giving the current a path to go through here. So yeah, this is the circuit we're going to use. Pretty cool. So let's look at this board again that I made. And you can see there's two fuses on here. This is actually the input fuse for the whole device which is going to go on the primary side of the transformer. And this is the fuse for the secondary of the transformer. So um, the two inputs from the power transformer come in here, go through this projector fire, and then we've got our various components here. The protection diodes over here, two filter caps. This one here is actually the um, small reference bypass cap that you can see here. This small 47 picofarad. This is this one down here. The actual chip is down here and then here's the 2N2904 2N3055 um, power transistor. This is the current limit resistor that we also see in schematic and that's basically <laughs> all um, that is on this board. I laid this out as a single layer board um, and that's why we have two jumpers here. Although it's a relatively simple circuit so it's absolutely possible to do single sided. Um, since we're going to draw maximum I'd say an amp um, I think you should be able to handle this with um, no heatsink but um, I'll definitely measure the temperature of this and I left some space on here for a heatsink that could go on if um, I should notice that this gets too hot. I mean, we're probably going to be far below an amp, uh, probably 500 milliamps or so maximum. So um, 
weight dissipate about two and a half watts, which should be okay without heatsink, I think. Um, but better to be safe if we draw more. And also I'll measure the temperature and see. So I don't have much experience with um, running these transistors without heatsink, but it's a very large transistor and uh, two, three watts isn't all that much actually. So I think what I should do is hook this up to um, a power source. Well, use these two input terminals and feed in some um, AC and then we'll see what we get from this regulator. First test, what sort of voltage am I getting out of this? 5.03 volts, which is perfect. I'm feeding in 12 volts from uh, my lab power supply, 12 volts AC, which is probably a little more than I'd give it uh, in the actual applications uh, application, but um, I don't think it would change much if we'd use uh, more or less. I mean, I can hook it up to the 6 volt tap on my power supply. And it seems to stay about the same, although uh, it's quite possible that these capacitors are just still charged. You can actually see it's going down slightly. I'll plug it back into the 12 volts. And we're going up again. <laughs> okay, I think next test um, that we should do is we should hook up a resistor to this and an amp meter. And we'll see how much um, current we can draw from this. Right, the second test, I've got it um, still hooked up to 12 volts AC coming in. It's going through an amp meter and into this 5.6 ohm resistor. And if I connect this here, getting 0.8 amps, which is what we'd expect. And to test if the current limiting is working, I'll hook up this second resistor and we should go up to about 1.7 amps, but the current limit is set to about one and a half amps. So let's see, we're actually getting 1.4 amps. So the current limiting is also working, which is good. So I think I call this power supply success and I hope I can figure out the replacement for this card um, before I post the next episode of this series. So thank you for watching and if you liked the video I'd uh, really enjoy to see you in the next one. Bye!